Good day, Father Matt Williams here in my parked car, Quincy, Massachusetts. Today's also the feast of St. Joseph, March the 19th. I'm reading from, uh, do you got a Bible? I'm reading from Hebrews chapter 11, the letter of the Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. It says that faith is the assurance of things hoped for, conviction of things not seen. Assurance of things hoped for, conviction of things not seen. You're no angel and neither am I. We're human beings. We have flesh and bone and we deal in a material world. Some of us may be very scientifically minded or have engineering minds and we like things that we can touch and taste and see and measure and calculate. And that ain't faith. Faith is assurance of things hoped for. In other words, we don't see the things we hope for. They're not before us, right? Conviction of things not seen. Having faith as an assurance is not an opinion or something I'm thinking. It's, it's an assurance that comes from heaven. It's an assurance that God is and he's real and he loves us and he saved us in Jesus. It's having a conviction in that which we don't see. So it's perfect because this is St. Joseph. St. Joseph is a man of deep, deep faith. After the Blessed Mother, he's the greatest model of faith that we have in our church. In that chapter 11 of the letter to the Hebrews, the sacred author starts to lift up all the pillars and the patriarchs of faith in the Old Testament. Moses and Abraham, uh, Sarah, Noah. All these people heard the call of God and they responded. They stepped out in faith. They stepped out trusting that God was calling them to do something and that God would provide. They didn't have a roadmap and have all the answers, but they knew God was calling and God is faithful and they could step out and do it. Think of Noah building the ark when there was no rain and there was no sight of a flood. Joseph is a man of faith. Why? Because he didn't, he had the word made flesh. He had Jesus, but he had to trust that God was calling him. He had to have faith that Jesus was the incarnate son of God. He had to trust that God was going to provide as he was entrusted with protecting and guarding and providing for the Holy Family. Just to pull out one scene in the, in the New Testament, how about when Herod called for the slaughter of the holy innocents, all the children, all the young children that were going to be slaughtered because he was threatened by the newborn king of the Jews. And so St. Joseph, who had, was already 80 miles away from home, now had to, fly to flee to Egypt with Mary and, and the baby. And probably not a lot of money, maybe the money they got from the three magi. So... Imagine leaving because you're being persecuted in that fear that your son could be killed. You're, you're refugees in a foreign land, in a world that's marked by paganism. You don't have um, a lot of means at your disposal. You don't have a job. You don't have a home to live in. He had a lot of reasons to have fear and doubt and anxiety. He didn't have a roadmap. To have faith doesn't mean we've got the whole thing figured out. To have faith means that I know who God is, I know who, who I am, and what he's calling me to do in this hour, to be faithful. We're in a crazy, crazy situation in the history of the world. Probably and nothing unlike nothing like this in my lifetime. And where's God in all this? Where's Jesus in all this? He's right with us in the boat. He's calling us to have faith. He's saying, don't let your circumstances dictate who God is, who you are, and what God's plan is for your life. St. Joseph didn't. In the midst of that crazy evil that was inflicted and being a refugee, no home, no job, he had to have faith that God would provide one day at a time. He worked, oh, did he work hard? Uh, absolutely. He worked so hard and he never lost faith because he knows God is faithful. So brothers and sisters, faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the convictions of not things not seen. We don't see God necessarily visibly in front of us, but he's there. Oh, he's there and he's worth giving your life for. He's worth living for. He's worth dying for. Draw close to him in intimacy today. Spend 15 minutes with him at least today, 1% of your day. Spend time with him today and be with him and let him speak blessing into your life. If we get Jesus right, we can weather this storm. God bless you.